We left Raven's Wing on her Baja mooring ball while I went down to Bar de Navidad to meet the Explorer 44 Trimaran Caliente as her delivery skipper for the final segment of her 6,000 plus mile trip from Chicago. This video is the tail end of the story, Caliente's trip from San Diego to San Francisco. Okay, we woke up on Tuesday morning out of San Diego, aimed at Catalina, and we've arrived about 8 a.m. looking at Avalon. Got the casino, the round building, this huge ass carnival cruise ship anchored out, blocking the view of the town. We're not going to stop. We're going to head up around the corner and go towards the west end. We've got LA over there in the haze. Not really any sailing this morning. Pretty mellow out here. Time to make some breakfast. Okay, it's not in the eggs. All right, don't forget the cheese. Well, I put a little bit in, but... So Mike has done an epic breakfast burrito setup. A dozen eggs peppers, onions, taters, refried beans, a little bit of cheese on top. Apparently it's really good. He's munching his. Oh. Going by all the camps, Lansky Camp on Catalina, eating like kings. Thank you, sir. Dolphins and pelicans feeding. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, they're such beautiful animals. Oh, <laughs> great. Oh, there's now there's a bunch coming right at us. Right under the top. Yeah, but look, look to your left too, though. They're all coming. These, this group's coming right at us. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's a bunch of them. Yeah, I've never seen this many. This is exciting. Look at all the pelicans. Just yeah, pelicans. Die, there's die. some kind of big fish school here. Everybody's munching. You saw oh, these guys? Thing, like, yeah. So these guys aren't these us. guys aren't hunting for fish anymore. No, they decided that they would rather mess around with the boat. Oh look back behind us, yeah. We just drove right through some kind of big bait fish school. So we are heading eastbound along Goleta, Highway 101 here. You guys are wondering why the boat is going eastbound in Southern California. We're on our way back to Santa Barbara Harbor. We are in limp mode with a rapidly deteriorating stainless steel steering cable. One of our cables is snapping. So we gotta go meet up with a rigger tomorrow with new steering cables. Yeah, we got to Point Conception at noon yesterday. The wind was howling. The uh, alarm on the BNG system kept going off. A high wind warning saying we were, it, the machine was experiencing 35 knots. It was steady upper 20s. When we were dropping anchor there in the Coho Anchorage, it's just a little tiny bite of safety behind Point Conception. It was a steady, when I was looking over my shoulder, 28 to 32. Uh, we drug anchor the first time we tried to set had a little bit of danger almost snagging the Coast Guard uh, mooring ball, which we assume had a big chain underneath it. Quickly got it all back up and uh, got reset, got hooked up. Spent the afternoon making repairs, calming down our nerves from sailing into a gale. Basically, the sea and wind state picked up much faster than we were really scheduled for. Trying to make it to our safe anchorage. Got a little close at the end there, but no problem. We got her done. Spent the night at anchor, but during our boat inspection, we found the steering cable issue. So super important, anybody out here doing this, to have a daily or at least every 48 hour regimen for inspecting every primary component of the boat the standing rigging, steering, engine. Santa Barbara is 20 miles off our bow. We got all these little tiny markers out here. Looks like it's a fish farm. There's a minor, minor, minor notice on the chart that we were just thinking if you came through here at night and you didn't really study the chart and try to interpret the little dotted line we just found, you'd run through this whole thing. It'd be a mess. We're in 
7 knots of wind. This time yesterday we were in 35 knots of wind. Go figure. Yeah, I see my channel markers green and red up ahead. The boys are getting fenders and dock lines on. The sails are all down and curled up. Let's get her parked. The riggers are coming uh, first thing tomorrow morning. Gonna measure for new steering cables. Dock, think dead ahead, according to the chart anyway. Yes, the Eagle has landed. Stuck the landing and we are 25 gallons of diesel in the tank. So, the steering held up the whole way and we'll get some new cables made. Because of our mechanical delays, Mike and Gabe had to leave the boat in Santa Barbara. But on very short notice, Anton and Andrew stepped off the train and onto the boat. We got rocking again. Okay, we spent the weekend at Santa Barbara to get our steering cables replaced. So it's now Monday evening. The, this is my first time doing an on the way check. So we're in the aft cabin. That's the autopilot, steering quadrant. the shipping channel. Whoops, we're in the separation zone. We should, uh, should we, we need to tack out of here. Yeah. Okay, it's about 5 p.m. on Monday. We left Santa Barbara at 11.45. We're making our way at the end of the Santa Barbara channel. That's Point Conception, Point Arguello. Uh, we weren't able to quite play this out because the shipping lane is right here. You can see that we have two container ships right there coming at us. So we're just tacked early to get out of the way of the ships. We'll ride it in pretty close to the beach and we'll make our tack out. I want to clear, ideally, Point Arguello by the time we get close to dark tonight. We've got about three more hours of daylight. So we're anxious to see what the sea state is once we get around the corner here. It was blowing 25 to 30 on the ocean yesterday. We're trying to find our groove. We've got nine knots of boat speed at 44 true wind angle. We can cheat a little higher. Andrew's back there working with the autopilot. A pretty big swell running. We're not in the real waves yet. So we're all batting down on deck. We just brought the screecher down. Everything's tied off. There's nothing else outside. We're ready for night operations here. So we're keeping our engine on until we get past the point. We'll go sailing in the daylight tomorrow. Okay, jib's pulling hard, main's pulling hard. She really likes to motor sail it. Here we got nine knots of boat speed. Let's see Andrew come up to the left and see what happens. True wind angle, we've been able to get away with about 35 degrees true wind. I just heard him put five degrees in on the autopilot. So this boat is so such an apparent wind generator. We can keep our apparent wind at 45 here. We've managed to keep our boat speed and take it five degrees higher into the wind. That's how powerful this boat is. Speed of the ground is still eight knots. Yeah, we didn't lose anything doing that. You can get a few more. The driver is, it's all on autopilot, but the driver's playing the autopilot a couple degrees at a time to optimize 
get as close to the true wind, minimize that true wind angle number as we can, and still keep the boat over eight knots with the engine on. That's the engine, full hoist on the main, and full jib. So yeah, going up California is a motor sail trip. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to shut the engine down. Okay, we're getting close to Point Conception. That's it right there, under the sun. We're cruising on, we found flat water, so we came in close. We we're right over here. Just in time to stay out of a huge kelter. So you guys can see the waves and look for that flat spot on the water. It's all a massive kelp that we can build our prop. Jagged work rudder. That was absolutely not there on Thursday. This is where it was blowing 35 and we anchored right out there. So finally getting the boat back to where we had to do our backtrack from. That's Point Conception. We're looking at the lighthouse. That's Point Arguello up there. And as we thought, we're poking our nose out of the ocean, out of the Santa Barbara Channel, and we've got pretty lumpy seas. These are the remnants of the 30 knot blow yesterday. Hopefully, it doesn't get any worse than this, and we'll have a quiet night going up there. The forecast called for these to be about eight feet. These look going more like six or seven. Not terrible. Go west, young man. Whoa. Got a beautiful afternoon out here, leaving the Santa Barbara Channel. Wednesday. It's a tougher day. The sea is, is built up. You guys can see the white caps. We're looking at Point Piedras Blancas. We passed San Simeon and the Hearst Castle up on the hill. Just listen to the weather forecast. It's tricky because it's blowing 15 to 20 out. It's going to gust to 30 this afternoon. But there is, thank goodness, a high pressure bubble on shore. And it seems like a big wave. Um, it seems like the ocean wind is hitting that high pressure and slowing down a bit right on the coast. But if we can keep the boat a mile or two off the edge here, we're in manageable winds. We're in 16 knots right now. We've got a lot of leftover wave action from the 30 knots that's been blowing the past few days. A little edgy. But, um, we've reefed. Ooh. Second reef on the main, got rid of the jib, keeping the engine running at about 18, 1900. Just trying to keep the boat at six or seven knots, motor sailing. And the wave state's just making this super tiring. So it's probably 10 more hours to get around Point Sur and then we'll get into Monterey Bay. And on the home stretch. Central Coast is beating us up. That's the face of trying not to be seasick. This guy's got his patch. He's doing great. Nuts. Almonds. So oh, good. He apparently ocean veteran. He doesn't care. He's on his phone. He's all good. Not me. I can't look down like that. driving ship and go over to Andrew who's on the helm. We're hand steering right now. Mostly because it's fun, but we also we go a little faster and we navigate the waves. You guys a peak. These are uh, eight to ten foot seas, pretty big. And the wind is about 15. We've got the first reef on the jib, triple reef on the main. And we're still running the engine because we need to point as high as possible. We're about 40 miles from Point Sur, Big Sur, California. But uh, we're just discussing a plan for doubling up shifts tonight, meaning two people on deck because this is going to be really tricky. The problem is 
when we go about at least a mile offshore, we get into really big waves and it knocks us down to five knots. If we stay in close, we're able to keep the boat moving at seven to nine knots. So that's the game plan. Pacific is anything but passive today. She's on fire. It's about one in the morning. You're looking at a black screen, but every 15 seconds, that is the light, 15 second interval light at Point Sur, just south of Monterey, California. We've been out here for about 37 hours in Santa Barbara. It's been a battle with really confused seas. Tough go. We're moving slowly, only about five knots. We're into a headwind and some current against us. But that's a milestone because that's really the last point or cape for Caliente on her incredibly long journey. Pretty inhospitable place to be traveling. Point Conception and then Arguello, just north of that, is Destroyer Rock on the charts. Something most people don't hear much about. And we're 99 years since. 1923, I think it was the biggest disaster in U.S. Navy peacetime history. Column of about 15 destroyers were steaming south from San Francisco back towards San Diego. Very fast, 20 knots. It's pretty fast in those days. In the fog, bad weather. And the captain on the flagship with his navigators misjudged when to make the left turn down the coast and into the Santa Barbara Channel around Conception. They were about 10 miles shy. They made a 50 degree turn to port and they ran nine of the destroyers up onto the rocks, crashed into each other. Uh, the photographs of that era show three or four of the boats on their sides completely destroyed on the rocks. And now on the charts, there's one little mention of Destroyer Rock. If you don't know that history, go look it up. 1923 disaster on the Pacific coast at Point Honda. The photos are really sobering. You've got to trust the instruments at night. They don't stop working at nighttime. And those people didn't, and 23 people died from it. It's Thursday morning now. We made it around Point Sur at about 3 a.m. That was, down, oops, that was down here. It's pretty, pretty edgy. We had to go in pretty close. And we've crossed Monterey Bay here in the early hours of today. Santa Cruz is off to our right. Not quite making Half Moon Bay on this tack, but we're pointing nice and high. Eight and a half over the ground, 9.8 boat speed. Oh, we're getting a little bit of a lift. I can come up just a hair. Take it up one degree at a time. And if you've been watching this, you've heard the engine on a lot. We're getting a treat in the last 29 miles of sailing. Engine off. These bows slice the waves nicely. Dodger. That's a header. Turn right. Monterey back there. Santa Cruz over here. Get her to Half Moon Bay. We're gonna take a rest stop in Half Moon Bay and pick up the owner. He's gonna sail his boat under the Golden Gate tomorrow. Caliente at the end of F Dock in Pillar Point. 
Half Moon Bay. We made it. We ended up with a really nice day sail today. We were able to finally shut down the engine just after Monterey. But we had great sailing. It's charging along upwind. We had a whale encounter. We saw birds on the water doing funny things. And by the time we figured it out, we saw a humpback come up. We were very close to it. So Andrew threw the boat off autopilot immediately, dove to the right. And as he did that, I saw the second whale in it. It was coming right at us. We braced for impact. I shouted out, whale hit. Thought for sure it was going to hit the dagger board. And that whale dove underneath the starboard bow. The starboard float bow. We watched his back go down straight. I do not know how that whale missed us. But thank God. We were only like 16 miles from this dock. The home stretch. We almost whacked a whale. But Providence was shining. Whale was good. They're smart. Okay, Caliente, we got our first view of the Golden Gate Bridge. So Caliente has traveled almost 3,000 miles up the Pacific coast. And this is Tivoli. They're right behind us. Tivoli is a 49-foot Beneteau Oceanus, 50-footer. It's come all the way from the East Coast, and she met Caliente here um, at the Panama Canal. They came through together. And we've been on the same schedule, even though Caliente's had three different crews since then. These people, we saw each other in Barra de Navidad. They were in Chiapas together for 10 days. Puerto Vallarta. Let's see, Magdalena Bay. I think they came to Turtle Bay as we were leaving. We've just done this incredible journey together and it's just amazing. Here we are a month later and we're going into the Golden Gate Bridge right there together. So it's been fun to have a buddy boat now. So we're sailing, we're going fast. Rolf has got his boat up to 10 knots in 12 knots of breeze. And Tivoli is right behind us. We're throwing a beautiful wake off the back. So I just spent time getting the screecher up in the air. It's gone really light on us. You want to heat it up and go outside? Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. It's going to be too low. Yeah. All right, wind's too calm and dead down wind to go in between. So we're going to go out, head to the north tower of the Golden Gate Bridge. Oh, this is wonderful. My part is all the way from Barra de Navidad, about uh, 1,500 miles behind us, approaching home port. Coming home. What a trip. The Baja Bash and the Cali Coast, no joke. They pushed us hard, and we came out on top. I'm actually pretty glad it's only blown about eight knots. A little mellow trip to the gate. It's just what the doctor ordered. Oh, look at that wave. Woo! Oh, this big boat just slices through it like butter. Look out, Bay Area multi hole <laughs> We got a new girl in town. This is awesome. This is amazing. Over 6,000 miles and she's about to come home. Yep, yep. All the way from Lake Michigan, Chicago, Gulf of the Fairlawns, and San Francisco. This is a San Francisco Bay. Oh, nice. A little flight of cormorants in formation. And there we are, there's our numbers. Captain Greg on the helm after a long voyage. <laughs> Trolls, the new and happy owner. Very excited. And here is us under Screecher and under the bridge. Our friends in Tivoli. Furthermore, 
and under the bridge. 115935 under the Golden Gate Bridge. 115934. Oh man. <laughs> and we're with Tivoli right there. Uh, uh, <laughs> we got through hey Pablo, we wish you were here. Huge thanks to the J World team for making this whole thing happen. This is more than a delivery. This has been a grand adventure for this boat. Paul and Wayne at J World. Great job getting this thing. All these miles, all these crews, all these good people. Drools and Linda are thrilled. Under the Golden Gate Bridge. You got it? Uh, wow, what a homecoming. Fantastic. Fantastic, huh? Congrats, <laughs> man. Beautiful boat. Oh, thank you, thank you. As we come down the city front, we are in the race course right now of the GP50s and the uh, super foiling cats. Great Britain team going out to their boat. There we go. New Zealand's just powered up. That happened so quickly. They were doing nothing. Within five seconds that boat was up and moving over 20 knots. And all that's happening in nine knots of wind. That's fantastic. I can't even see the team. It's making big whistling noises as it goes by. It sounds like an airplane. Too bad. If we were an hour later, we'd be right in the midst of all the actual practice runs. But we need to deliver this boat to her dock. This is how we roll in San Francisco. Pretty much dead calm here by the Oakland Bay Bridge. So we furled the sails and motored her on down the Oakland estuary to put Caliente at her new berth in Oakland. I was able to officially stand down on behalf of the delivery managers Paul and Wayne of J World, San Diego, San Francisco, Puerto Vallarta, which is a great team for all things performance sailing on the West Coast. Give them a call. Uh, then grabbed a big hug from crew Andrew and Anton. Thanks for all their work. And we tipped our caps once again and big thanks to Mike and Gabe for crewing the San Diego to Santa Barbara portion. And with that, the long trip concluded uh, and new owners are thrilled with their boat. We'll be doing some work here to try to recover some lost footage from the Baja portion of the trip. Hopefully I can get all that done and get you guys another video. Until then, we're going to go have some more Raven's Wing adventures. See you later.